What's up guys, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next example. So the curve y equals ax squared plus bx plus c passes through the point one and two. Then the line y equals two x plus one is tangent to the curve when x is equal to three. We gotta find a, b, and c. So this one's a little bit tricky. There's gonna be some extra algebra in this one. Notice that we have three unknowns, this a, b, and c. So what we wanna to try to aim for is getting three equations. So how can we do that? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rewrite that y as f of x, just because I feel like the notation will be a little bit easier to use throughout. So we got this curve here we're working with. Notice it's a parabola. We've got to solve for the a, b, and c. Now, let's create three equations here. We know that this curve here is going to pass through the point 1 and 2. So we definitely know for sure that f of 1 is equal to 2, right? So we can actually make an equation knowing that they're our first equation. So we could plug in 2 for the y value, and then we would plug in 1 for all the x values. So we would end up with a plus b plus c. So there's one equation we have. Now, we're told that the line y equals 2x plus 1 is tangent to this curve when x is equal to 3. So what's going to happen is we don't know whether this is going to open up or down. Let's just assume for now that it's opening up like this. And what's happening is that an x value of 3 we have a tangent to the curve with the line y equals 2x plus 1. So this line here is y equals 2x plus 1 and it's happening at an x value of 3. Well, if it's tangent to the curve at an x value of 3, notice that the tangent line, y equals 2x plus 1, and the curve, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, they share that point right there. So that point is also going to be on the curve. So notice that we can find the corresponding y value at that point 3. So if we plug in 3 for x, we would end up with a y value of 7. And so we know that this point not only is on this tangent line, but it's also on the curve because the line is tangent to the curve at an x value of 3. So we can create our second equation knowing that information, knowing that 3 and 7 is on the curve. So if we plug in 3 for all the x values, and then 7 for the y value, we would end up with 9a plus 3b uh, plus c. Sorry, not equals c. So 7 equals 9a plus 3b plus c. There's our second equation. But notice that this is only 2 equations here. We have three unknowns. So how can we get the third equation? Well, notice that we know what the slope of the tangent is at an x value of 3. It's 2. And so what we know then, if the slope of the tangent is 2 at an x value of 3 for this function, what that means is the value of the derivative at an x value of 3 is equal to 2. And that's where that third equation can come from. But we have to get an expression for the derivative. So we could take f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and we could derive it. So we'll have 2ax plus b, like that. And then from here, notice that 2 is going to equal, we would plug in 3 for the x value here, 6a plus b, like that. Right? And now we have our third equation. So now we got three unknowns, three equations, and now we could solve for A, B, and C. So coming up with this one and this one is a little tricky. You gotta know kind of what's going on. Hopefully that diagram helped in you seeing what's happening. But basically that point three and seven is on this tangent or uh, on this curve because it's also on the tangent. They share that point at an X value of three. And then because the slope of the tangent is two, then we know f prime of 3 is equal to 2. And we could create an expression with that information. So what I'm going to do here 
is um, what can we do? Let's uh, let's actually take this and subtract this because then the C's we'll get rid of the C's here, and then we'll have another expression in terms of A and B, and then we can maybe do substitution and elimination because we'll have two expressions in terms of a and b. Another thing you could do, you could isolate for this b here, which would be 2 minus 6a. You could plug it in here, plug it in there, then you'll have two expressions in terms of a and c. So multiple ways you can do this, right? As long as you get the same answers that we're going to get at the end, it doesn't matter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to subtract this. So 7 minus 2 is 5. 9a minus a is 8a. 3b minus b is 2b, and then c minus c is just 0. So those c's canceled out. right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate for the b here. So b equals 2 minus 6a, and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in here. So we'll have 5 equals 8a plus 2 bracket 2 minus 6a, like that. So we'll have 5 equals 8a plus 4 minus 12a. Bring this over, we'll have 1, and then we'll have negative 4a. Divide both sides by negative 4, so a would be negative 1 over 4, like that. So that's the a value. Notice we can easily find the b value by taking this, plugging it in here. So b equals 2 minus 6 times negative 1 over 4, like that. So this would be b equals 2 plus 6 over 4 is 3 over 2. Change this to 4 over 2, so b would be 7 over 2, like that. Right, so b is equal to 7 over 2. And then I could plug in a and b for either of these two and then solve for c. I'm going to plug it in this one. I feel like it's easier to work with because there's no coefficients in front of the a and b, so we'll have 2 equals negative 1 over 4 plus 7 over 2 plus c. 2 equals, this would be what? Let's change everything to have a denominator of 4. Uh, 14 over 4, like that. 9, and then uh, bring the 14, so it would be negative 5. Right, 9 minus 14 is negative 5. So negative 5 over 4 would be C. And those are your final answers. The A value is negative 1 over 4, the B value is 7 over 2, the C value is negative 5 over 4.